My name is Michael Edmonds. I am a kitchen manager currently within Market Basket's store number four in Chelmsford, Mass. I will not be hashtagging this to any of the Market Basket pages on Facebook out of respect for what those pages represent. Anyone who wishes to add this anywhere may do so. I, however, will be expressing views beyond the current campaign of our fight to bring Arthur T. DeMoulis back as CEO. I have grown tired of this game, and in these final days, as decisions are being made behind closed doors, I feel now is the time to put my piece on the board. I have been told to stay out of it, to keep my head down, and simply protect my own job, but I can't. This issue is larger than we could have ever believed, and I have chosen by my own hand to convey these beliefs and these opinions at my own risk. When this all began weeks ago, I tried to keep to the business-as-usual philosophy being heralded by the new CEOs. I knew it was a lie, of course, an attempt to quell the dissent that would rise in such a close-knit company, a company built on values, family, respect, and hard work. When things escalated and we began a campaign to bring Arthur T. back, I nodded my head in support and carried on with my work. I felt my responsibility was to my customers, and I prepared myself for the possibility of being without product by bulking up the orders ahead of time in the event of a warehouse shutdown. I would hold out as long as possible, not for praise or reward or to protect myself, but because of my own pride. Pride in my work, pride in my department, Pride instilled in me by those who taught me, guided me, and gave me the tools. Tools that helped me reach the current position I hold in a short amount of time. I surveyed the field, paid attention to social media, and continued discussing the events with fellow associates. I did not join groups or become too entangled as this began. As the news stations began picking up the story, and the unions began to sharpen their claws, my interest was finally piqued. I knew right away that the old guard of information would have no idea what was going on. The current media creates more news than it reports. The current media fans flames and creates drama for the sake of ratings and popularity. Their focal point at the beginning was their confusion over how we were organizing without the aid of a union. When the politicians in the state of Massachusetts, I believe 17 legislatures, signed on to boycott market basket stores, my immediate reaction was, how many are up for re-election this year? This is a year where Democrats are positioned to lose big at the polls. Of course, they did not disappoint, as I heard the vim and vigor of men and women their voices muffled by the sound of their own salivating mouths at the prospect of more voters, or possibly new dependence on their defunct systems if we were all fired. I really couldn't tell which. This campaign has been about a man and an ideal that he represented, a man who comes into the stores and interacts with the customers and thanks the associates for their contributions. I have met the man. I met him my first Christmas working for the company. I did not know who he was. But I never expected the man at the head of our company to come up and shake my hand and say thank you. And I've met him several times since then. The same thing. Thank you for everything you do. Respectful. This man has fought vigorously to protect our our benefits in this company from other people in the company. We have not strayed from this purpose of bringing him back. We've been unifying behind it. It's the only reason this whole thing has made it this far. If we held signs that said more money, fewer hours, or hands off my bonuses, we would not garner support from outside the company. 
In this difficult economy, no one can honestly get behind people arguing that they're not paid enough. This mentality, this unity, is precisely why it has been so easy to keep the public view of the current board of directors, the current CEOs, and Arthur Estimulus, Arthur T.'s cousin, as the villains. As we gather with one another and back a man we respect, we stand against the truest evil, greed. Avarice rules and it corrupts. Why do multimillionaires and billionaires need more at the expense of others? Some try to fight this by claiming nonsense like eat the rich or we are the 99%. But even these are politicized movements in the name of discord, sometimes even perpetrated by these ultra-rich. Someone blogging from a Starbucks about corporate greed on a MacBook is no crusader. My point of bringing this up is to say that these are nonsense phrases. Because we should be aspiring to be those people. Why should we settle for being the 99%? Let's make that level of ultra-rich 1%, 2%, 3%. We should be elevating our station, not sticking to the status quo. But are we not all pawns in this movement? No, we're not, because we're writing it ourselves. We are pawns in the game, but we have a chance to change that. There's more at stake here than our jobs, our livelihoods, benefits, bonuses, pride, and the low prices that ourselves and our cons customers enjoy. This is a final stand for what this country was built on. This is a final stand for free market. If we lose, then corporate corruption wins. If we lose, then the divide between the upper, middle, and lower class will continue to grow as the middle class is slowly eradicated. We have allowed this to happen, allowed ourselves to be manipulated into letting massive corporations run by a select few elite control everything from what we buy and to tell us how much time we can spend with our families versus working to make them money. We've allowed them to create a gap between the rich and poor. Capitalism did not create this. People did. Our richest people deliberately burn the bridges to success so no one can challenge them. We put these people on pedestals that cannot be climbed. Instead of on hills we can become the king of. The media is against us, using false information to stir up trouble. This nonsense that came out today about a job fair next week if we don't get back to work. Stop threatening us. But the media reports this as fact, claiming that we're refusing to work. We're not refusing to work at all. I clock in every day. I clock in, and I stay in my department, and I work. I have people that go out on their own time to the street, and I stay and hold the fort. But the problem is, traditional media's time is in its twilight hours. Social media and citizen journalism gets the facts out long before they get out of the makeup chair. This movement is about a man and an idea to be threatened, ignored, and lied to by everyone around us is the true abomination, not the execution of our right to assemble. Where are the great paragons of American individualism and virtue? Those who claim to be for the average everyday people are not in the streets with us. They are not in the stores with us. We're in the final stand against the dissolution of our pride as human beings. And they leave us like sheep in the field. 
They would rather focus on the possibility of an upcoming impeachment of Obama than the people they claim to represent in our well-being. Is it all ratings? Is it because most of these people are just entertainers? Are they people who are fanning the flames of war? For no reason. I don't know. But these include media moguls, entertainers, and politicians alike. We set out to bring back a man and to keep an ideal alive and found ourselves on a battlefield larger than we ever suspected. Like many, I am tired of the threats against my job. To feel as if I'll be marched out into the street and have my name tag torn from my coat, my coat ripped apart, and a boot in my backside into the street. For what? For standing up to them? These people seek to turn the consumer against the associates of Market Basket. We should not threaten the status quo. How dare we step out of line and tell the educated elite and the privileged that we will not stand for their greed? How dare we call out corruption and ignorance at our expense? I have been told to sit down, shut up, or else one too many times. I look around and I see pride, unity, friendship, and family. This isn't about Arthur T. DeMoulis anymore. For us on the home front, it is. We've become closer as a singular family of 25,000. But we're more than that. We could be more than that. A force to be reckoned with because we are staring into the face of evil and we are saying no. We will be a symbol for our sacrifices, even if our names are never on placards. Our customers and everyday people will remember us, even if big business, media, and government sweep us under the rug. Will we be heroes? Or will we be martyrs? We are in the final stages. And only time's going to tell. But no matter what happens, we're a family. And that does include our customers. The consumer is an intricate part of that family. I come from an Italian family. And I can remember stories my aunt would tell me. She's in her 90s now. She would tell me stories about how years ago on Easter Sunday, she'd have 40 plus people coming in and out of her little tiny apartment for food. That's how much food she made in her little kitchen. They were just people she knew, neighbors, the mailman. That's what family is. All of the associates in this company and all of our customers they're part of the family we're all together in this and it is about you but no matter what happens no matter what we become when this is all over with we are market basket